All right. There was so much we were talking about off, off camera. Off camera. Yeah. This sounds so angry about it. Let's get back here. We didn't save it for on camera. Uh, yeah. So I can continue to berate you about how I can't stand that you sketch things out and call them doodles or sketches and you don't sell them. Or yeah. let's talk. I'm, I'm really, I'm really curious about um, you and the collective, the 1850 collective. Yeah. And particularly, like, <clears throat> what did that add to you as an artist? Because it sounds like you're. Ready it was to move more on. of a a public confidence that it gave me. Like when you put when you put your work yeah. out there, uh, it's hard. Like as most mm-hmm. artists, like are by nature just insecure about what they produce. Definitely. Uh, so being able to be in a group setting to where it's like you know there's always safety is no, safety in numbers like where you're mm-hmm. you're showing with a bunch of people, but I mean. I don't know. I mean, it's. Uh, I've always felt, for the most part, pretty comfortable, you know, producing art um, for people. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, the collective really kind of like hit home. It's like there is really. I mean, Stockton is lacking. You know, it's. Uh, you know, a new generation of artists. You know, and. Uh, but, but you didn't. You didn't do it for Stockton, though, did you? Um, you know what? What's like honestly was, was that was your intent, or that was a nice byproduct? It was a nice byproduct. It definitely was a, a byproduct of of I don't know. We after our, like it was our first year that there was just a huge amount of success with the collective. We had shows coming up. People were super excited to come to our shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was just a really big buzz, you know. Yeah. And mm-hmm. after we that, actually, I even went to the first one. You did, you did, and you know, and it just like. There was an, a certain amount of electricity that you know happened with with that first year, and after the first year, we had changed uh, presidents. Yeah. Um, and I think the intensity kind of like leveled out a little I bit. I see that. Um, and um, we still had shows. We didn't have as many. We weren't. We weren't like pushing each other. Like we did in the the you know the first year where it's like we were having shows almost like once a month or even twice a month you know mm. it's like we were lining stuff up you know there was a lot going on yeah it was a lot and it became almost oversaturated I felt yeah you know? yeah I could see that yeah so um, yeah I uh, the collective for me was just a huge platform I don't know man it was just like that like a really good incubation time for me to get. Um, to get more comfortable with like one live painting, uh, I it was the the first time I think I ever really with eighteen fifty did a live thing was actually a, a show called eighteen fifty live and it was on the rooftop of uh, was that one live? Yeah, it was all live. I'm fucking with you. Oh, of course, of course you are. Stupid question. Um, but yeah, that one was live. We had probably about five or six different artists on mm-hmm. pedestals just painting whatever you know live. And um, I, for some reason, it just it just kind of like came to me to like start just like pulling people out of, out of the crowd that were walking by, um, and just saying, "Hey, you want to paint?" You know, mm-hmm. it's like, and these are all just really unsuspecting folk, and they were just like, "Uh, okay," <laughs> you know, kind of attitude. Um, and right and right from there, which is like there was a spark, you know, mm-hmm. like like then 1850 members start coming over and getting in on the piece. And the piece, if you scroll way back into my Instagram feed, was a cutout of a Pac-Man ghost. Mm. It started out very simple. Yeah, it was yeah. a very simple cutout. Uh, and I just started painting on it. I just kind of like was looking at it. It just felt very contrived and just like not very fun, you mm-hmm. know? And so I just kind of like wanted to change something up. And I just started inviting people that were there at the event just to kind of throw their mark on the piece and just, like they can come back yeah. at the end of the night and say, yeah, I, I helped, you know, I, really I was cool. a part of that, you know, and, and that to me was kind of like the essence of what like 1850 is, is just like really helping each other um, kind of get better at what we do, mm-hmm. you know, and I so, think I felt like I had to reach, like I felt like I, I had a kind of like a point where it's like, like a plateau, you know, and that's where I was like, all right, well, I need to kind of think about what's next you know um, do I really we we wanted this I, you know I, I maybe it was just me getting just like self-conscious like when I d- did decide to tell the collective that 
hey, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on and kind of hopefully pursue this in a more professional way, and I need mm-hmm. I need as much time as I can get to do that, you know. And, mm-hmm. and I think for the most part, everybody respected that, which I was really really grateful for. But um, for the most part, yeah, I mean, there's people that were sad about it. I mean, yeah. they, um, and and not I, mean, I, I hate talking about it too much because then it just becomes like almost yeah. ego you know it's like yeah. oh yeah people were super sad that I was leaving the club that's alright what's going on with that uh, I guess I don't know I guess I guess the ego thing I've never really been very much of an ego physical person mm. I've tried to not be anyways um at any rate, so I left. I left the collective, and it was a uh, it was a good thing, you know. But but yeah. being in the collective was a great thing as well. It's just um, it was time. Yeah. Um. How did that come about? As far as joining the well, collective, yeah, just, or as far or, as well, like no coming together. I mean, if, if other artists are watching this and they're wondering how to get you know band together with go to art shows, I, you know that's like and go to local art shows where. It's like in your community. I um, mm-hmm. I think somebody else has asked, asked asked me the same question. It's like, well, how does how I does asked one it better. huh? I asked it better. Did, of course you did. Um, but like, how do, how does one get like connected with yeah. other artists and stuff? Um, you just go to like local art. I mean, Facebook is like mm-hmm. a beautiful place to where you can find out whatever events are happening in your own town or your own community, uh, whether it be art related or music related but um i mean just like look look around and just see what's out there available you know in your own community because that's really where we started um uh i've always i mean i've, I've lived here almost all my life and stuff but was it like one person's idea did, did one person have to be like hey let's, let's do something together i really think the the seed that was planted for 1850 was was like a little bit before 1850 started um, because we did some shows at um, at the Impresso with um, Melissa and Roger that was just like random artists right? and that was random artists that it wasn't, wasn't a thing thing. but that's actually where we kind of all met each other like most of the collective members all kind of like met each other and just like we're really excited about each other's work yeah um, and like and we just continue to do more shows and it's just like we really kind of enjoy this this is really fun you know and it's 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 so funny like to back the story up. I um, I didn't want to actually be in any group. I didn't want to like like be a part of the Stockton art scene because I had a stigma of what the art scene has been. Like people are just doing the landscapes and doing like the the very therapeutic end of it. You know mm. where I didn't want that. I wanted to do something that was new, that was fresh, that was edgy. That's like that kind of like fulfilled me, and that wasn't fulfilling to me at all. Do you feel like you got that? Um, and I felt very fulfilled. Um, That's what she said. Be- <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. And so, yeah, I did. I felt very fulfilled because I, we had a lot of progressive um, people in the group that had the same kind of like passion, you know, and, and drive okay. and direction. So... Um, prior to 1850, that's where we met at these shows. We did... <laughs> It's so funny that like I left on the note of of the Star Wars show. That's actually one of the first shows that we did before 1850 um, started. Was a Star Wars show at the Impresso. That's right. Yeah, I remember that. So um, that's where a lot of us met each other and kind of like kind of united. Yeah. So yeah, a little backstory. I'm gonna try and uh, do some Instagram live. Sure. But I don't have something to prop us up with. Uh, are you still drinking that? No, I want to be able to see it. Here. It's going to be on you, right? It's all on me? Yeah, I'm just going to hold this thing. Okay. All right. Live. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Mm-hmm. Like, I, I know, I know for... Me, I, I was not interested at all in... Um, you came to a meeting, right? Yeah, I came... No, yeah, I did, right. And you were actually drawing while everybody was bickering and like... That, that, <laughs> that first meeting That first meeting was awful of 1850. That was, it was the worst meeting and the most embarrassing moment because like Eric from uh, Cast Iron was standing in the doorway. I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, he was just like kind of like silent and I just felt embarrassed because nobody was giving anybody... A moment to chat or to like there, to get that was there was yeah there was a lot of bickering and there was like money talk and like that it's gonna happen yeah. but 
for yeah that I wasn't going that direction but just my thoughts on that yeah I was more like I wanted to draw yeah and not talk about that stuff I wasn't interested in that I wanted to create you know so that yeah that was you know wasn't a good fit for me but I I also I had an aversion to like uh, working with other artists and like putting myself out there before yeah. meeting with you yeah. and um, uh, Gabe and yeah, shit what was, what was what was the other guy's name? Eric. Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Eric. Uh, so I was Catholic. that. I had an aversion to that, but I kind of did it, you know, just to see what it was like. Yeah, I guess so. And the benefit of that, like working with and learning from other people. Yeah. Do you remember I, the, I, I, I had just, at that point, this was years ago, but I had seriously discounted how important that was. Do you remember the piece that we collaborated on? The, um, the, the, uh, the Venom and the Venom Hunters. and, yeah. yeah, that was fun. That was fun. It I was. think that was like, that's probably one of the only pieces we've collaborated on. No, um, I'm sure yeah. we've done some scribble art exercises in the, in between all that stuff. No, but, that was about it. Yeah. Um, but it was like yeah that was cool and I mean the collaborations aren't a huge draw for me at all but it was more like seeing other people work yeah you know what I mean um, and then I, honestly when I think about coloring I think about you you're mm -hmm. like my standard for coloring which is unreachable <laughs> stop it, it, shut up <laughs> <laughs> no it's really like this um, it, it's a it's I have your highlights in mind and I know what they look like when you do it yeah and I can't redo it but had I not seen you work, yeah, and and put myself out there like that would have been yeah for sure. That, that I think that was a benefit for me as part of being a little part of that group, you know. Uh huh. So I can see how being with eighteen fifty might have been. It is, and there's um, there, you know there's 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 some people in the group. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be you know be around the bush, but you know there's people in the group that are doing it more for a. Not necessarily social end of it, but you know, not necessarily for the professional end of it. But it's fun for them, and it should be. It, and just, I mean, but I think mm -hmm. pursuing it in a, in a more serious way was is the direction I was going. So maybe that's why I began to get a little frustrated with uh, mm -hmm. the amount of professionalism that was, you know, that we were working on. You weren't happy with that. Um, I mean, we certainly could have been more professional uh, with uh, how we, uh, and just trying to get better, you know? there I know, like, it felt like sometimes we were just, like, trying to slap some work together to get into a show because we were on a deadline, and it was just what we did to uh, to get a piece into a show, you know? Mm -hmm. And for me, um, and then for those people that put out a lot of time and a lot of effort into it, you know, um, it, it kind of, like, was, like, frustrating. Because it's like, well, I'm putting all this effort into this, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like, not everybody's giving their, you know, the same the X amount of percent, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, if people see this and and hear me say that, I mean, I'm I'm to past the point where I really do care whether or not I'm, I'm offending anybody, but. Oh, really? um, because well, it's, that's, because I it's I would, true. It's, it's yeah, true. Yeah, I, I would think that's the danger of being as part of a group. Yeah. You know what I mean? and then maybe, Not everybody's going to be producing on the same exact skill level. I mean, no. it'd be nice, but I mean, that's just not going to happen. No. Um, but um, I felt like, even I, I've, I've been guilty of being lazy in, in, in some of my work that I put into a show because I just get busy with other things. And you know this because we've talked about that. But. Um, I'm just taking on too much. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just starting to like just draw, and just create little shapes. <laughs> Is that what you usually do? No, I mean it. Just I, I'm just in, I'm in a monologue right now, so I'm really yeah. I'm, on, I'm on like <laughs> autopilot. Um, hey, for the couple people that are watching, this is um, at Color Lab K O L O U R Lab. He's an artist extraordinaire. Luckily, I have him here with me. Stop and it. We are. <laughs> We are well. He's creating, and I'm kind of doing the best I can to keep up with one hand because you're holding the camera. No, I'm not even drawing anymore. Oh. This is just on you. Okay. All right. I, I wish I had my damn thing, you know, st stick to hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's really no way I can just prop this up. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way, but there's no way. Viagra. Yeah, all right. Uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to coloring. Yep. Bye, bye, guys. Bye. Share your video if I think it's funny.
I like like this. This this happened just now, and it's like it was like I wasn't it wasn't an accident. I just I just started doing it, and it's just I wasn't thinking about it, and I was like I like that, you know. And it's those like exploratory things that just like happen. It's like oh I, I like how that's happening, and then like just acting on those moments to where you can go. And just capitalizing on it. Well, that's why I was curious before when I was asking about shapes. Like, how, how much planning do you do ahead of time as far as... Because you do a lot of different textures. Mm-hmm. And your light sources are always very strong. Mm-hmm. And it seems like you do get the shape down of mm-hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. So I'm really curious, like, how much... Of, you say this was not planned. No, I just started doing that just now. And I, but I was just like, I like, I like that, you know, because I'm not married to, uh, like, I don't have this in mind for anybody. It's for me. It's fun. If it no. doesn't work out, I'm cool, you know. I can. Oh, I that's can, not for a thing. That's just for you. It was initially for a thing, um, but I think I just decided to kind of like, because this, like, they didn't necessarily care for this. Like, it wasn't necessarily going to be part of their label work. Um, oh, okay. They were actually kind of. Are we recording anywhere? Um, yeah, on the computer there. Uh, they were actually more interested in. I'm not gonna try and dig it up, but there's another drawing in the book here that they were more interested in that was geared towards it, and it was a little more hazy, this, that, and the other. And they liked okay. it, and so for, for this, this is more just a fun piece for me now to kind of play. Oh, wow. So we get to watch you uh, kind of play with yourself over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Will you prop your Will you prop yourself up over there? <laughs> yeah, I mean. I don't know. I just I I'm I'm a I'm an advocate of like people get so um, uptight when it comes to their work. They feel like it has to do a certain thing or it has to work a certain way. Um, you don't think that's you? I I think I think no because I'm 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 I f- I feel like I can let go and like this action here. Okay. It's like I didn't intend for that to happen, but it happened, and now I'm like I like it, and now I'm capitalizing on it. So leaving that up for grabs, leaving the spontaneity part of it okay. up for grabs. Um, and you know this could have not worked out this could have been you know just like fluff and it could have looked terrible and I would have just closed my book and never looked at it again well there's still time <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just I, I like relinquishing that like sense of like control and like like the whole scribble exercise being able to like not necessarily yeah. have to like create something from nothing you have something you can work with you know, mm-hmm. and you can play off of it. Okay. Um, I think that's what I was getting at. Is just the um, spontaneity of, of working with something and being okay with going a different direction. You know. Mm-hmm. But I also think I, I, I mean, and that's not to say that I like like I don't have the competency to to do that. You know, I know that I can navigate another direction. It's like I have that confidence that I can like oh this isn't going to work so I'll go this direction and, and work it this way I can do that because I've done it en- enough yeah. to where I have the confidence and I think the, the skill level to actually do that and I know that there's maybe artists out there that are still trying to get their bearings or, or their fundamentals you know mm-hmm. down yeah. uh, I'm, first I'm one of them yeah. um, that um, that they maybe can't do that so that might be frustrating but again don't ever fear just to like of, of just playing because it is only art and you can do it again or you can yeah. do another piece you know uh, yeah I, I think that's something people really wrestle with is making it perfect yeah I, I honestly I, I kind of thought that was you I'm definitely my, my I'm first, definitely guilty of that I mean I my have, first impression of you was when I was drawing with Sharpie you were like no you can't do it with Sharpie you gotta, it has to do with Part of the reason, Copic. yeah. Well, the part of the reason I was saying that is because of like I saw that you had a, an amazing skill, like of what you do, and I didn't want to see it, um, <laughs> the integrity of it, like uh, over time. Yeah. Because um, I'm all about like, I don't know. Maybe it's just like more of a of a life thing that I, I'm like I'm always worried about like, did I matter in this world and like <laughs> it, like does like what I like leaving your mark, you know? Yeah. And maybe that's too deep for most, but I mean I really. Like, if something's good and, and you're putting it out in the world and you want it to, like, I think of, like, Van Gogh. I think of all these artists that, like, yeah. they knew what they were doing when they put down their varnishes and they put down all their preservatives to, like, maintain their work, you know, over time. And it, and it has. Yeah. And so seeing you, you know, doing some pretty cool stuff, 
the reason I chose to say like no you can't use sharpie is because like in a couple of years that's going to degrade down to like the, the color is going to change you yeah. know and things like that but not everybody thinks that way yeah um, and I wasn't necessary to like be a snob about it it was really just because I felt like you were really a good quality artist and I didn't want to see your work get like came off a little snobbish oh well <laughs> I try I try at any rate um, I had your best intentions thank you apparently it was not good enough <laughs> I don't know, don't you think it's, I mean, uh, just room to just kind of fuck around and create, you know? Yeah. And that's okay. That's, that's, that's great. Um, I think that's, that's important. Um, and that's why I love getting with my kids and just drawing and just having, yeah, you, yeah. and having that time to where we're, um, playing, you know, like my kids mm -hmm. for Christmas, they got a, uh, a, a ream of paper, like coffee paper. Like that was like something that my wife said, the kids draw so much, we can't keep up with them. That's they go cool. through so much paper. Like one of our relatives got each of them a stack, a ream wow. of copy paper and they're just plowing through it. They love it. Um, That's cool. Man. But you know, it's just, it's just finding that time too to sit down and just watch what they're doing and what they're into, you know, and like what they're creating. My daughter is like gone from scribbles to like very very she's detailed doing some good stuff, yeah. yeah and then the, her color skills have gotten better too like she's actually become more detail oriented and conscious of like what colors look good um mm. and yeah. so um for a nine-year-old to have those you know you know mm -hmm. to be conscious of that mm -hmm. you know it's, it's pretty huge because i don't even know if i had that awareness you know when i was that age oh, yeah. what is that third grade fourth grade mm -hmm. um yeah i was definitely not aware of that so I don't know. I felt like I, I feel like I'm doing my part as a as a father, you know, and and what I can offer. It's like some fathers offer, you know, certain things to their children that are important. Um, mine is just to be as creative minded as possible, because it's going to help you in the long run to be a good problem solver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. And uh, so, just doing the art, you know, and just being creative and just having a, a wild imagination is is hugely important. Yeah, um, totally. and I know you know this as a as an artist father as well with with Bella, you know. Yeah, but um, I haven't really pushed that at all. I mean, yeah, I know, I know you. I, I, don't, I don't think you push it. I think that you it's do just it the with example. It. Yeah, yeah, example for sure. This is looking really good by the way. Like that, yeah. you're putting all that yellow. In. I know you don't see it now, but I think when you come back in with maybe with your other tones, uh, I'm, I'm I, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing. It feels like it's definitely lacking an umph. Yeah, and it's too scribbly for me. Yeah, um, I think right, what's happening right now is like your flames mm -hmm. are almost competing with the skin are, tone. Yeah. Yeah. So what you could do, even if you wanted to, with that like white jelly pen, come back in and and the door's like, mine. That's mine, but you can go ahead and play with it. By all means, go ahead. It's there. <laughs> it's mine, but you can play with it. But yeah, go, go going back in and just toning that, and then even if you wanted to tone it, tone it to where it's not in there. Just, yeah, just in those like those spots where you feel like it's the hottest. You could even like drag like it almost like feels like a linear center core of, of like yeah that's you know and then and then tone it out you know mm -hmm. it'll take some time to like scribble it onto there but it'll it does, it, yeah. it'll it'll get there it'll come on there um uh, yeah I think the, the with with uh, and even my son like my that my wife was just like man I don't know if Ethan's got the gene you know for the art thing or whatever but he's like right there with Emma right now he is like. Oh, wow. Every day that Emma's like drawing or whatever, there you go. Yeah, That's I think really once cool. you add that white into there, it's really going to start to push it against the. Do, would you let the white stand on its own, or I would probably almost let I would it. let it I would let it do it on its own. I think that white is the hottest point. Have you know? been, look, huh? in, look in the top drawer here. Yeah. Um, do you see like a fat white paint marker? I have one in my in my mix here. Hold on. I mean, it's, this is this is going on. It's just yeah. I know it's just not going on the it, probably because the it's it's good though. It's might be saturated. I don't know. That could be true. Here you go. This should go on. This should be better. Where do you get the Molotovs at? Um, I did get them at uh at uh, Aaron Brothers. Yeah, this is definitely better. Um. But uh, I don't know if they have them anymore. I know they're like always changing their stock of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, if I can, I'll, I'll shop at Aaron Brothers first over like Hobby Lobby and stuff, just because I know they have a pretty decent selection, usually. Mm. Do you ever frame your work, like your finished work, or is it just stay in sleeves for other, other people to frame? Just in sleeves. Yeah. There was, um, if I was to continue to do conventions, I, w- I would definitely frame them. Um, there was a guy I talked to, in my, I think my last convention, uh-huh. and he was telling me how much more sales he would make when he framed things. Yeah, because it's done. They just buy it and they can put it yeah. on the wall. I get Actually, that I have something from you up in, that I have not put on my wall. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I bought, I bought, uh, bought it from you. Uh huh. Um, it's a beautiful piece. Is it the it's tree? Is it the tree one? Tree, the yeah, music tree. Yeah. 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 Yeah, on the music tree. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never hung it up. <laughs> and actually, I have kids. I have pictures of my kids of Jay. Yeah. And of the family, we've never hung up. We just don't hang it up. Um, you know, honestly, I'm the same way, and I'm just as guilty. Like, if you went, came into our house, you'll see that there is not very much on the walls. Like, we've got no. maybe like six framed pieces on the wall and that's it yeah but that's I don't know I don't yeah, know if so, it's because so this guy he was and he was raking it in like he was doing really well at these conventions mm-hmm. um, I want to interview him because he was just killing it he was doing better than, me, than I was um, and I did pretty damn well but he would uh, buy cheap frames from Ikea yeah and uh, put these things in frames and he said it made a huge difference yeah, people people buy stuff as gifts or whatever, and you know it's, yeah, it's, it's already ready done. to go. Yep, it's all set to go. So yeah, yeah, yeah and I and I and I can see that too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like it's like at an art show, you know, you wouldn't just put a piece of art on the wall without a frame. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, you want to have a. You're trying to you know create a finished look, and that's just true with the pieces going at the at the show too, like the comic show. Mm-hmm. Presentation, man, is I've, I've realized over time is like huge. Yeah. When, when it comes to um, uh, you know, promoting your work. I can see this. Is this yours or mine? Uh, it's mine, but you can go and use it. I have the same ones. I like these. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, they're disposable, but they're still pretty damn good. Mm. Yeah. That's. I mean. And that's the, the purpose even with this solo show, like doing installations mm-hmm. around hung, already finished pieces of work. So where people get to experience the piece rather than actually just go and view it. Yeah. Um, I think is, is important, you know? That's how they're pretty cool. Bullshit. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, and then I get to hopefully, I mean, I've already talked to, uh, Chris C. Deddington mm-hmm. um, and he was like yeah dude let's let's do it you know and I, I'd like to get a I'd either like to either have him or send some money to him and have him purchase some panels and have him do a large scale sketch like we've done in mm-hmm. the past on paper mm-hmm. and do a full size painting you know collaboration for the show as well should be pretty fun that would be cool how much uh, how much presentation thought do you put into what you post on Instagram Oh, I'm 100%. That's like, that's, it's, it, I mean, I've always edited my photos when it comes to like posting. You know, I want to make sure that like it's as true as possible with, within reason because, you know, with your phones, everybody's phone's different and it always looks different on somebody else's phone. Right. Um, so I'm realizing very quickly that most people's phones are a little bit more saturated than what I see on my phone. So keeping that in mind, I, I definitely try and kind of like, edit my photos a little less oversaturated and contrasty and all that stuff. What do you I know mean edit? That, like on your phone? Or yeah, on my you... phone. Like like when I go to, like I'll take a photo of my work, you know. Um, some people like just take a snapshot and just post it and don't have any. That's what I do, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and there's nothing wrong with that if, 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 you know, your work can stand alone on, you know, but, and it's not to say that mine can't. It's just, that's just me and my own OCD. Yeah. When it comes to presentation of, uh, of my work. And it's not like it's like gallery presentation or anything. It's just I wanted to have it like not just be on my kitchen counter, you know, with like food, yeah. food and crap behind it and stuff I, like yeah, that. Yeah, I put some thought into like the lighting and, you know, I, I'd like to be decent lit lighting. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I don't do any further editing. 
I do the editing part of it because I know that it could look it could look a certain way or I could or it can be improved a little bit. Hmm. And that's just me. That's just me and my OCD yeah, yeah. when it comes to that. But um, yeah, I um, I definitely want to make sure that the presentation, you know, it's not just like snapped in a really weird obscure place where like there's clutter and crap and it's okay like sometimes with like the art supplies around it that kind of yeah. creates a that kind of creates a look yeah but um but just having like your lunch that you had earlier in the day and yeah it's like all the other crap around um definitely want to get rid of all that stuff for presentation you know because we want yeah. people to focus on your art really I got you yeah totally um but I mean, if you're like out on location somewhere and you're doing art you know out in like maybe you're doing like some plein air or like some stuff out in uh, nature or something like that or you're mm -hmm. on vacation or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to see, oh, he's on vacation and he's still working yeah, you know, yeah. kind of thing, you know? Yeah, well, um, it's part of the story. It is. And that's also what people want to buy into as well is, is your story. It's like, who is this guy? And that's me. Like for me, when I, when I see a really talented artist and like all I see is just their work, it's like, who is this person? You know, it's like you want to know more about them. Uh, so that's what I get kind of excited when I see oh this person's human all right cool mm. you know mm -hmm. um, and then too it just like it really gives you a sense that like I'm I'm just like these people really they're on maybe a different level of productivity uh, skill level but I am still a person just like this person we still put our pants on the same way every day mm -hmm. I mean maybe you know but um, yeah so um, I think maybe humanizing and just like getting the people that we admire so much off these pedestals um, yeah is really important because like I still do it to this day I still like oh my gosh so and so like my piece of art and like yeah. it's like that's validation but it's like think about it like these people are just like you creating art um, they're mm -hmm. just doing it on a different level yeah I agree there, there's, there's still those artists out there that I get kind of excited by if they give me a like or whatever yeah I do too I do too. There's no, there's no getting around that. Um, but I've kind of made it a game now to where it's like those people that you get excited about liking your work, actually engaging in a, some kind of conversation. Mm. You know, that to me is just like more meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. So. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like my goal. Is like if there's a certain artist that I'm really a fan of. Uh, I'll do my best to either go to one of their shows and like make it uh, make mm. a, an appearance and talk to them and just kind of like connect with them and get yeah. a, get an email and and pick their brain too and like sit and that's the beautiful thing about most artists that I've come across some of them are just like su I've I've tried to get in touch with super busy artists that are out there that I really admire but yeah. I know that they're busy and I can't take that personally when they don't necessarily get back to you yeah um, but uh I think uh, for the most part, most artists are willing to like give you advice or help with questions that you've got. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. I think that's important too, as as a creative, when you're when you're um, when you're out there producing and stuff. Because we all used to be that kid that had questions and didn't have any idea how to do certain things and. You know, if if somebody's willing to like give you some you know guide, you know some way to like help you out and answer your questions, it's like it's like gold, man. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah. Do people hit you up and ask for stuff? As far as like questions, oh yeah, 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 yeah for sure, for sure. Um, they're asking about my process, like you even tonight. It's like, dude, how, like you go. So like even C. Deddington, like who I mm -hmm. really think is a really talented artist. Yeah, he's good. Um, he's a great draftsman, and he's and he and he's admitted it. It's like man, I've I'm I've got a lot to go, you know, with um, the coloring and rendering and all this that and the other. Because he is, he's a he's probably one of my favorite um, draftsmen as, mm -hmm. as far as like his line quality, his and it, and really it's just like the most 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 of the subject matter that he that he draws is like kind of in my wheelhouse already. Yeah, it clicks for you. Yeah, and so that works. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I'm just a fan of his, his line work and his like whimsical approach to his work. Mm -hmm. um, but like he hit me up one day and he literally had a, a list of questions like he wanted to ask me. 
uh, about uh, about uh, process, you know, and so that to me, like when somebody who's I feel is like pretty competent already has questions about something that they value me for as an artist, mm -hmm. that's pretty big. I mean, that's validating for me. Mm -hmm. No, I know. I, I don't. I haven't hit you up in a while, but I, I've te definitely texted you and. I love those little, I love those little like threads that we've, you know, you, you'll send me a picture and you'll work on something and then you come back um, and then you're like, how about this, about this? And I, it's like, I always I often wonder, am I actually hitting home with you? Am I actually, mm. are you actually getting what I'm saying? And it's not to say that you're, you're incompetent. I'm just, I'm, idiot, yeah. am I, am I, am I explaining <laughs> myself um, clearly, you know? Am I am I am I making sure that you understand what I'm trying to it, convey to it, you? Sometimes it's hard to understand because I, I know it makes sense to you what you're saying. That yeah. Basically, that's the way you think. That's the way right. you visualize things. But I don't know if you're. I don't know. It, it's probably very difficult to 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 explain to people, you know, kind of like what you see. Yeah. And then, and then how to do it. And and then just do that audibly, not even like visually. Yeah. Right. Right. Or have, have not even that. audibly, like through text. Yeah, because usually it's you know we're texting. Yeah, I think yeah. that's uh, yeah. I mean, I, I do my best to try and try and give you as much as I can. That's yeah, um, super helpful. Dude. But um, and I try and do it in small increments too. That's the other thing when mm. you can when you can give people just like hyper like hyper focus on like one particular thing. I remember the McDonald's um, like all the fast mm -hmm. food. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Case you were working on that was a lot. Was probably the longest thread that we've had as far <laughs> as like figuring out what you wanted to do and I remember the french fries were like a big That's thing right, yeah. big thing that you were working on <laughs> and dude you nailed it though and I felt like I, I felt I kind of like patted myself on the back because I felt like I I helped enough for you to like yeah, helpful, really. get what you needed you know mm -hmm. from that um, totally and I felt like you really really excelled um with everything I didn't realize that you were putting a whole compilation together I thought it was just like one very oh. isolated piece you were working on I didn't realize you had the whole fast food franchise you know <laughs> in one picture yeah that was a fun one yeah it was super I want to do more I want to do like Wendy's yeah and uh whatever else but yeah. she'd be fun with her red hair and stuff I think she would be yeah I wanted her like, cool. in a, like in a milkshake standing in a milkshake and I started, <laughs> frosty or whatever yeah I started doodling in it and it wasn't quite clicking and I moved, moved on to other stuff yeah. it was just time to move on yeah I mean I've, I'm always like coming up with I'm not, I don't know if you can do this in the morning or whenever you like an idea strikes you mm -hmm. maybe maybe you, you're of the mind that like if it's if it comes back to you then it's 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 an idea worth pursuing mm -hmm. but for me it's just like always like in the morning come up with ideas like if you can mm -hmm. come up with five ideas concepts whatever yeah not necessarily for one particular piece or anything like that but just like something you could like put it down it's like oh that's a great idea like the Cheshire Cat head that I did or whatever in the cutout and like what I want to do with that it's like there's another idea why don't I take that and create t-shirts or stickers yeah. or or actually um, make prints and then make cutouts and actually apply the prints to wood cutouts so they actually feel like mm -hmm. I mean these are just ideas but like ideas that you could take off of just one idea like it's like this like this whole like branching out you know yeah um i my ideas at this point are going toward uh sculpture stories my, my comic yeah like all my thought and brainstorming is really going toward that mm -hmm. and i'll have ideas for prints every now and then and i, I know i'm just not going to get to them yeah so what i've started to do is write them down on my website and give them away to people you know if they want to oh yeah it. yeah that's interesting. I call it the, uh, the how do I call it the idea bank. Uh huh. Yeah, so I have a, I have a couple down so far, but as I think of stuff, I'll put it there. I think that's a that's awesome, and to be honest, like that you're willing to like give these ideas yeah. out just freely, and and that people can be like, wow, who does that? You know? Yeah, uh, I, that's that's a, something I've focused or that I'm going to continue to focus on is how I'm adding to the artistic community. Yeah. And one of them is the idea bank, but also I, I was doing these, these uh, mentoring things with uh, uh, someone I met on Instagram, but then he, he met me in, at a convention. Okay. And um, I don't know, have, have you seen me post about that at all? Mm -mm. Oh my God. Well, maybe I need to post about it more. But, maybe I just need to actually check your feet out. Maybe. But um, <laughs> he... 
was following me on Instagram and I met him at a convention. Uh huh. And we got we sat next to each other and you know hit it off. Had a lot of you know similarities and he was a fun guy to talk to. Yeah. And um, kept in touch. And he I asked him if he would be willing to do the last my last two conventions with me. And I said I can't pay you, but he he loved the experience and so he he you know he jumped out and he did my, did my last two with me. And then after that, we kept in touch. Mm-hmm. And he asked me if I would talk to him on a more scheduled basis, like as a mentor, you know? Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, let me record it. Yeah. So that's what we've done. That's so cool. So on my YouTube channel, I have the first two episodes that are uploaded. And um, that that's another way that I'm kind of adding, hopefully adding to the community is yeah. this mentorship thing. And part of my website is like a paid mentorship. Uh huh. That I want to, I'm offering people. Um, yeah. And one of the options is actually free to get, like, you know, my thoughts or just to talk with me about what direction they're headed in and get some clarification on what they need to be working on next or whatever. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, so that's another way I'm kind of adding, hopefully adding to the artistic community, you know? That's great. And especially with comic book style. Yeah, I don't know much about the comic community or, like, how giving. Um, yeah, people are in that yeah. community, um, yeah. but um, it seems like it's very similar to the the art community as well. Like I, I think so, yeah. Like the uh, more fine arts, I guess, community. Everyone's it's very willing to like volunteer information. Um, yeah, give people mm-hmm. tips. You know, I think that's great. Yeah, um, well, I, I have a lot of videos on YouTube that deal with that, and the interviews I've done, I chopped up into bite-sized pieces. Yeah, uh, I'm working on that, you know, and they all have little tips or or whatever. Yeah, for and it's and it's think. honestly like not not necessarily fact things that work for people. It's it's what's working for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and then hopefully people can like identify that with that and not necessarily take yeah. it take it like this is actual fact. This is how you do this in a professional way. No, no, no. This is how we. F- figure that it's professional and it's yeah. like this is how we're trying to make it work well and the other thing is I've no so I've kind of become a, like a mentee to um, that Carlos guy yeah Carlos Mendoza the third um, in LA okay he's kind of we haven't done a talk yet through live stream but um, we've talked on the phone and we text each other and he's helping me out with my value studies and uh, okay. shapes and form and whatnot and I can see the benefit of you know, working with him for a while mm-hmm. and then switching to someone else to focus on an sure. entirely different aspect of what I'm doing, you know? Yeah, well, it's actually kind of like this really cool symbiotic return. Like, you're getting, like, you're getting an education by mentoring somebody, like, because they're, because yeah. you're helping them with something that maybe you're not necessarily yeah. 100%, you know, good at, uh, but you have an idea. Well, what, I've, it, to, what I've told, his name is Brendan, what I've told him is, like, I can help you out with, like, inking and some coloring stuff. And I was like, but I've reached a certain point where, um, I have a lot of room to grow, and I, I'm not working on this stuff professionally. You know, I, yeah. can't, I can't help you land a job. Oh, yeah. And, and he's like, yeah, but you've done conventions, you've done commissions, you're doing prints, and that's the stuff I want to get into. Yeah. So he sees a benefit to that. So good. Our, our focus has been on conventions. Um, that's good. Work ethic kind of stuff, um, focusing on priorities. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff I'm lending him, but I know that there's things that I cannot or I probably should not comment on you know yeah, yeah. I, feel, I hear that I hear that um, and that's good that's that's the good to be honest with yourself and say yeah. you know rather than like give somebody false information yeah. you know yeah yeah oh totally um, I always I'm I'm, a, I'm I'm much better at like as an artist he's like well he's an artist he must know everything he is about the art right. it's like that's right. not true <laughs> no in, in, in episode one the first thing I say is like alright look there's some limitations I have here yeah, I cannot help you get a job. I haven't done that myself, and I don't know if I'm going to. I, <laughs> I have a career that I'm really happy with. Yeah, and so we established those things right off the bat. And I, I wouldn't feel right, you know, saying otherwise. Yeah, you know I, mean? I don't know what else I could do with this. You definitely nailed like adding those white parts. That helps, yeah. That helps. In the, into the into there. Um, you could. Um, I'm used to outlines and having that crisp. I know, and I and love I'm that you're. That. I love that you're. Uh, that you're like really not like you're fighting that. You know, I really you could. That. I mean, you could come back, and that might give it what it needs. But, no, no, no. Um, no, I'm. I'm sure that would tidy things up. But 
I, I don't want to do that. Um, I would recommend taking like the lighter tone of this like skin tone, and working mm. it in like starting under the nose, mm. underneath the nose, and just fanning uh, fanning yeah. it towards the the yeah. heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that might help. Well, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I, I kind of started to do that. And I think yeah, I, and if it's I, not intense, I would I, take it another step darker then. Yeah, I kind of pulled that. Oh, yeah, much better already. Because it's now what that does is it pops the nose out. You're right. You are right, Jeremy. This is on, this is like, this is going to be public that you just said I was right. Oh, dude, you, you know what you're doing, man. <laughs> I have no problem with that. Um, and maybe in the ear, like in the cavity of the ear, I would like go give darker. It, yeah. yeah, just give to give it so it doesn't feel like, like a flat ear, medallion. Yeah, over. it it does. Um, ears like they're kind of translucent though at the same time, though, right? They are, uh, but there is a cavity. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, there is a cavity like that. That helps it. <laughs> it's diff. It, it's it's really difficult, man. It's like I don't. I thought I thought about things like in three D. Yeah. But apparently I don't well enough, and then there's so many little shapes. Like this is the ear shape, but yeah. within the, there's these all these kinds of shapes. Yeah, and I... yeah. And then and and then when you think about like your intensities too, because like yeah, and that's so much better already. It is. Um, but you're thinking about the intensities, like this intensity here and this intensity here are all the same. So what that what yeah. that means is like this is where the the most intense heat is. Right, right, right. right? And so from there, you're going to slowly not be as intense. So even like up here. The eye is a light source, so fine. I have and a little bit and more that, there. And that's fine. Yeah, that's great. But no, so do you feel like I'm too intense right here? Like the nose, like like maybe you could like over the top of that ridge, over this part of the, the nasal part, you could like maybe just drop some, drop a shadow on that. Right there? Or? Yeah, exactly. And, I'll, and drop it all the way out to the end of the nose. So because that the outside of that nose isn't receiving. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yep. And it's really just understanding what, what, what the shapes are doing with your light source. And, uh, yeah. uh, and that's just over time. That's just a matter of time yeah. and experience, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You could even like, um, you could even go darker in like the, the, the most darker areas up top on the skull. I actually, I started to, I did a, a black, the special yeah. black. So like with that here? special black, yeah, what I would do, what's the next color between the skin tone and the black, though? And then, so then use that and then soften it some. What do you mean? Like in this area right here? Yeah. You know what you could also do here? I'm mm -hmm. not going to actually do it, but like here in this little, like, nugget, like I guess they're like spikes or yeah. their horns or something like that. Yeah. Because this light actually might just affect the underside of that. I had that, that orange and I went over it because I thought it was too intense. Yeah. So what you could do, I don't know. I think I think just creating like with the either if it's already saturated here with the with the mark, with the colored pencil, it might be. then you could use this and then actually just cut and tone it with a pen. Okay. And just it's just Back a simple, to yeah, just just a simple, easy um, highlight there. Uh, doesn't have to be too much. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then you could go back and you could tone that. Um, with like a yeah, with uh, I would go with like a lighter, like a lighter, almost like um, start with this yellow. Or actually, I like this maize color. Uh, I don't know uh, if that's well, that's not very orange. Well, it's not orange. You don't want it to be orange. You want it to be because it's yellow, yellow toned. I would and, think that farther away from this, that would be more. That's yeah. what I was aiming for. Yeah, if you want to do that, then then maybe like a, like a natural, like a natural tone wow. might be good. The, the beautiful, the beautiful thing about those those white uh, those white tones, I mean, and so it's not completely mm -hmm. orange and it's not completely mm -hmm. yellow. So it's. Or if I should do that to like the bottom of the ear as well. You can, yeah. I mean, that would because the be... ear is reading. It seems like it's all the same intensity. Yeah, as you get closer, I would definitely maybe just like on on this little like little lobe part or this thing here, mm. maybe just like a little a little glint on on that part to give it some form and then. Yeah. Um, and then maybe just the lobe, yeah, down there. Yeah. And then if that you want little, to, that little addition, actually, if you want to tone it, you can tone it. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff is just really. So the same thing with these the bones down here. Yeah, I think what happens it's here not is, popping out at all. And part of the reason that's happening is I think what you could do is darken darken the the tusks as you come up, bring it up to that. So what you then what you're gonna do it's like because what's happening is like this orange is not the same value as this, and so it's actually darker. 
So there's darkness. She thinks should come up. I would rec- I would bring up like almost like that sand, like this color, you know, would work. Uh, bringing what, it up right to here? The, yeah, bringing that up to the orange. And so it's like really? that tone right there, because that what it's an in between. You're looking for that those, uh, uh, and what that's gonna do is is it's gonna like be darker than your light light sources, but it's not gonna be as dark as the. Yeah, that could actually help. Wow. A very simple little change. Yeah. I was just sticking with grays. Can I move this back a little bit because your like picture is actually really quite blurry. It's it's yeah that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got help. Yeah, I mean, even if it even if it didn't, you could even take a gray tone and come back over the top of that orange. That's what I was try- had attempt to do. And yeah, I, I just didn't pull it off. You know, so that's nice. Yeah, that's a that's a little improvement. So I, this is pretty darn close to the flame as well. Right. Would a little bit of this make sense? It wouldn't hurt. And then go back over it like that. So what I would yeah, what I would recommend is because that has a, a bulbous. Let me see your. Let mm-hmm. me see the pen. I'm not gonna actually do it, but because it actually starts here and rolls out towards you here at this point, because that's where mm-hmm. the light's hitting most. Uh, yeah, you could definitely maybe hit some of those cracks, like create like crack yeah. highlights. You know, yeah. just like on a ridge of a crack yeah. or something like that. And that would help too. I'm I'm worried about doing too much with the white though. Yeah, but like I said, you can you can always tone those down with color. Okay. So it won't feel as as really obnoxious. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to use that uh, paint pen if that's not working out. I might have to. Yeah, this is the one you were using earlier. But I like how you even created like the the embers and, the, and like the, the particles. Try you could do that with the white the, the white paint pen too, and then tone it if you wanted to. That would create a little bit, and even do it like here in the facial area too. Like have some embers around the the actual flame in the face area. Next level shit, damn it! <laughs> I don't know if I did enough on this one here. No, it's good. It's actually really good. So I like how it doesn't like go any further than that when it starts to roll back the other direction. So with this one right here, tone it back maybe? I'm you can, yeah. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Are these too bright right here? Yeah, those are too bright. I would almost recommend using, um, start with the, like the maize color first. Uh, and if it's not, if it doesn't work in your favor, like if it's too yellow, uh, maybe use like a slight orange, orangish, um, uh, maybe a little like bit pumpkin, more. maybe like a pumpkin yellow. Pumpkin, busting up the pumpkin. Wow. Where, where, so what, is this all just like trial and error for you? Mm-hmm. At your expense. <laughs> my expense? Well, because it's your piece, it's not so. my piece. No, but I mean, just as far as you're... Yeah, it definitely is a trial and error. And I also kept a very limited palette, too, of the pens, so I know what each pen does and what colors work and what colors don't. Um, hmm. Yeah. So that's like, oh, man, I need to have this color. Oh, man, I need to have that color. Yeah. I don't think I took any of your pens. I think these are all mine, right? Uh, I think so. I'm not even there for... But yeah, dude, I mean, already it's... That made a difference. Mm-hmm. I'm I would thinking, def- I'm thinking darkening up right around where the... The skin maybe gets tucked in underneath the I bone. agree with that. And I also recommend bringing some middle ground. Like, this is not quite dark enough yet. Okay. I think you need to kind of bring up not the same intensity as the, the all, all the way to your blacks. Okay. Yeah. That's that where this liner pen could work, too. To your... Oh, yeah, it could have, yeah. But yeah, I like the idea of getting your colors down first, and then really accentuating everything with your with your line with your with your mar- with your linear markers. What do you mean linear markers? Well, I mean the liners, I mean linear markers, the liner markers like these. Oh, yeah. the liner pens. Because then you could go back and you could add some details like the cracks and stuff that I can see you doing in the. Yeah, it's trying to pass those off as like a shadow. Yeah. In the oh. you know the, of the crack. That looks so much better that you just did that too. That you added those. It's a better transition. Yeah, so much better. Mm-hmm. You could, if you find, if you can find something that's just the next level lighter than that. Yeah. Start at your start at your chin here and kind of bring that up to your flame. I had done a little bit of that. I think it's with the W three here. Yeah. But maybe another layer of it. Yeah, for sure. That already these these like chin spikes or whatever already really feel like they're 
got some dimension to him. That now. helped out a lot. Yeah. Dude. Thank you. Yeah. And you know what you could do with like the darkest areas of those? If you wanted to create some kind of reflective light, just add a color, like whatever color you wanted to add in the shadows down, down, here? down at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. That could add just an extra I, I know, was... layer of interest. Even if yeah, you, it could. It could. Even oh. if you use like a, even if you use like the tan tone, it doesn't have to be a, another color. You could use the tan tone as like this paper maybe is like quite has some kind of reflective light happening. So how do I do that? Um, At this point, how do I do that? Here, let's see if I have the color. Um, I I have a I have a. Um, let's see. I used to keep like a color that matched that tan tone paper. I'm making a mess over here. Um, I want to say that's the color. That's, uh, I call this I call this my eraser pencil because it's the same color yeah. as the paper. And you could light with. You know yeah, and maybe if you didn't want to go that light, I don't know. But you could go like in some of these little cracked cracked areas. You could add some areas of interest in the shadows. All right, I got these. These might work. Those are almost too bright. I think so. This is why I was trying to like sit, stay in the tone of the paper. Uh, that's pretty close. Yeah, that's close, right? Yeah. But what I would do it very, very lightly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't punch it like with a heavy hand. I would just add some, just like softness to the edge. Um, so do it in like. Do it from up. Yeah, and you don't have to do it a solid line. Like maybe find some like crevices that, but maybe it hits a little bit more intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not a solid line that just follows it all the way up. You're just finding certain spots that you can kind of visualize in the darkness there where it might have some, I don't know, some cracks or something like I that. You. you know, like that. Yeah, exactly. A little bit. Just to soften it, you know. Mm-hmm. I was trying to go for um, one light source. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. I mean, but it never hurts to just add just a little glint of a, of a, of another area of interest. Yeah. Even on the neckline, I can already see it. it's yeah. kind of already happening. So you may as well just. Well, I, the what I did was I took the black. And rather than yeah. going all the way down the bottom, right. I started it right left here. Left it a little bit, yeah. yeah. And that's good. I mean, you can already see that's happening, but even just like accentuating it a little bit more, just like will give the viewer... Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I get excited about that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Like Creature Box does a lot of these kinds of like quick sketches. Like they'll do like very quick studies of like heads. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they do. Digitally. But... Um, Yep. And even if it felt like it was too strong, go find a black or something that's in this tone. You could actually dumb it back with another, with mm -hmm. another color. Yeah. No, I think it's good. Yeah. That's why I always encourage people to start out light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, dude. That's dope. Cause you could even pop like you could even bring your darks up some more like oh man it's just I, mean, I can already see it like you've got these beautiful creases happening here mm -hmm. and like if you took like that color that's next like from from the black that's not that's the black w7. Do you have yeah. a w7 i don't have any any warm any warm grays all my grays are, are the neutrals oh, here it is. but swiping that up from the black mm -hmm. um, yeah would be really really helpful And, and it would create some kind of a dynamic too. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, yeah. But you see how you've already got some like, you can already see some of the uh, creases and things that are happening just from your marks, you know. And I kind of like, I like playing off that kind of stuff. Yeah, so now yeah. he's got like this like turkey neck, you know. It's like all these yeah. crease, uh, creases and stuff. And then from there, I would take your next color that's like the next lighter color than yeah. that and swipe it even closer to transition, to transition a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> because you're not going to lose that glow even if you get close to your flame. Yeah. Like you could even, do, I would do that here too. Because like there is no actual flame much here. I mean, no. if, there's, if there's a little flicker of it, fine. But like, I would definitely soften that up a little bit more too. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, yeah, I think this could actually actually use like whatever lightest tone you have, like swipe a whole just cover the whole thing. Like even over the yellows and stuff. And like kinda of dumb it down. Yeah. 
Because that what hap- what that does is it pushes no, the intensity. I, I can see it already, yeah. Yeah, it pushes the intensity. Well, more the lightest is W1. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference on this paper. No, so if, like the next darker one that you have up. Three. Yeah, just go ahead and swipe over it. You may not feel like it's doing much, but like no, as, as you get as you get like closer and stuff, you definitely like just looking on your screen here and no, looking at your work, you can definitely see it. Yep. Um, yeah. It's a whole lot different, dude. And you've done this style of like lighting too. I've seen it in some of your work, like creating digital. Digital, yeah. I would definitely like in this area here, mm -hmm. try and tone that, try and soften that somehow. So get like that. Kind of like color. Yeah, kind of what you did in there, uh, because right now it just feels very strokey, and that's fighting, it and it's fighting with your all your beautiful flames and stuff that you've got coming off. Yeah. I got yeah is, is that drying out? Drying out. Drying out. Try the try the brush tip and see what happens. That's better. Yeah, anytime you can soften those strokes. I mean, strokes are always nice, but um, yeah. you ever thought about doing like a sponsorship through Copic? Copic, Copic. I thought about it, but I know there's so many people that do workshops and and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, they all get already established. I'm, you know, yeah, I'm not. I whatnot. can't. I can't like claim like authority on like I I know what works for me. You know what I do. No, 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 I think you're first fucking close. Well, I appreciate that. Um, Damn right, you do. <laughs> so I like get, I want to get some oh, so what, what do you so like I noticed that like you you already have some already some like mod, modeling of like almost like m like mealy like even here how it's like it's almost textural I wonder if you could like with that or unless maybe you don't mean maybe you didn't mean to do that yeah. um, no well, this right here like this right here yeah that's kind of like the, the clothes go yeah. all the way up there uh -huh. and underneath his Chin directly. So right now, like this, you see how it's like we've got a shade here, and then like almost wraps around here, and it almost becomes like bulbous here. That wasn't my purpose. I know, but I mean, if you could play with that, like, and actually make it make it feel like. Oh, actually, that wasn't making myself. Yeah. yeah. So if you can make, because I can already see mm -hmm. how it's, how it's yeah. shaded here, I shaded here, see, like, and then you can just like start playing. I can see it here. Like if you can see yeah. like little highlights happening already, play on those things, man, and soften them up, and then. Um, and then just create the little little pockets and things, and now you're creating another layer of interest as far as like yeah, your, your texture goes. Because this is beautiful. I love the shading you did up here. I mean, like, it doesn't. It's not there yet, but yeah, that's. I was going for you know this is like his huge right. I you know brow area. Yeah, and you see now how this almost feels like a whole shape here, and it's like shaded yes. here, and it comes towards you or whatever. Yeah, it's. You can play off of those little things that like you've just created like this other level of. Um, Interest, I guess. Not me, dude. You did. Hmm? Not me. You did. I'm just executing. You're the one who's You're the executor? guiding me. It's going to make some good content for my YouTube channel. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, I think, yeah, this is great stuff, man. Yeah. But beyond that, I really actually really appreciate it, of course. Really helpful. Yeah. So we have a little shape right there. That's pretty convincing, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, for this, sure. this area I haven't driven home yet though I actually really quite like it because you've got like it is shadow it is yeah. shadow information here but then in those shadows areas you have actually have um, mod model, you know, modeled areas like you can see where there's like highlights yeah. in the shadow areas um, if you're really unhappy with it because you want to see you know see it be a little bit more intense I can understand that I would I would screen like I say screen but I would layer a solid color over everything so all yeah. this, all that information still stays excuse me so it would be like a lighter yeah w1 yeah. w3 kind of exactly thing? exactly situation yeah if that's what you're trying to do is darken it up yeah i would definitely just just i, I think i wanted to lose the sketchiness of it mm -hmm. it just didn't have a very refined look yeah and that's hard because like when that you helps. work it when you work in, in large spaces the pens tend to not lend themselves really well to like making everything look smooth and blended unfortunately mm. I see. Um, let's throw down some uh, embers. Yeah? Yeah, I want to... Uh, you, you do a lot of that. It looks really good. 
Yeah, that the paint marker is definitely a good place to start. No, that's not the problem. I don't care if people can hear the outside, it's the top here. <laughs> the paint marker? The paint marker is a good place to start. Oh, we're All right. Um, I actually would use this dries faster. Um, but in in like some of these like here is definitely because it's coming out of his mouth, you know. Yeah. It's like you have a sense of like of when like the fire has to, like this wind and it's trailing behind him or whatever. So there's either he's moving forward or there's some kind of like direction that the wind is blowing it. So mm -hmm. your information would be a lot like you would get some embers maybe in this yeah, area. Yeah. Maybe a couple of here, but like trail back here even. Yeah. But like here, like the hottest point where it's coming out. Yeah. that's where you want to like really yeah, pop, I mean, pop some embers and yeah. maybe different sizes and um, okay. of, of, of embers it doesn't have to all be just like the perfectly the same size yeah. dots and then on top of that I would like you've already done with like the pen the colored pencil because the colored pencil doesn't hold the same intensity as the pen that creates kind of like another like dimension too because it's not all the same intensity of it's not as it's not as uh, it's not as saturated and, and concentrated uh, as like a pen would be Okay. So I mean, showing like giving you an example, like you know, I'm just giving you a couple embers from, you know, from the, from the uh, with a colored pencil, you know, and then taking the pen, and then popping. You see how it's like even more yeah, yeah. intense. Like so now you can get like you get like this like oh, it, it yeah. has dimension. It starts to push back yeah, a little bit. You know. So I don't want to go too crazy though. I mean, I threw down a bunch of them. Yeah, and that's okay. And what you can do with those is you can. Um, you know, you can also, um, I, I think you're okay with where you're at, but like, I would do some like very small dotty things too, because you've already got some good punches like of larger mm -hmm. embers, but like gathering some like smaller, more... With the pen or with, with the pencil? Uh, I would do it with the pen because you're not going to necessarily get well, I guess the... I have a couple smaller ones. I don't, right. I don't know. It's, it's pretty permanent. I don't want to do too many. Either. Yeah. Well, but if you want to kind of like in, dumb down the intensity of all that, seeing all that, just mm -hmm. tone it with a pen oh, and yeah. you won't see it as much. And then on top of those toned down ones, then you could pop more whites on top. And then you're creating these like, yeah. some are orange, some are like more hot, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I'll call it, I'll stop there. So, but you don't leave them white, do you? You can. I mean, you can tone them down. Some of them actually look pretty cool white. Um, yeah. maybe, maybe tone these big chunky ones here yeah. down. Um, so I, I, I want to go to the yellow right away but you're, so you're suggesting a kind of like a, a middle of the road muted, like a yeah. muted yellow yeah and then what you can do if it dumbs it down too much yeah that helps out that's nice is, what you can do is you can go back in that same same ember and just like do a little dot on the inside and what you've done is you've created like a, like a, a nucleus yeah, yeah. a hot nucleus right. inside that ember so and those are just those little tiny details, you know, that people will notice more when they see it in, in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is actually for the contest winner of um, the Sculpture Design Contest. Mm. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. I really like, I don't know if these meant to be embers, but they almost look like divots or like pits in the... Yeah, I wanted to give his skin some... Some like texture. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, th I think there's a lot I could do like in this area. There's probably a lot more I can do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I, I don't want to go too crazy on it. Yeah. What you could do with mm. the with the paint pen is come in come in here into where it's coming out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. That's the hottest point, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, hit it pretty good with in that the paint flame pen. itself. In the flame inside the flame itself. Yeah. And if it feels That'd like it's cool. too much, you could definitely tone it back some. Yeah. With some. Uh, I kind of treated that with the same. Yeah. Wait, you know, with this pen, that yeah, that's all the, over like here. when you think about a flame and you look at a fire in like a fire pit, like the 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 center of that fire is either red hot, like where the no, yeah, are, yeah, yeah. or it's like just white hot. You know, mm -hmm. I was going for more of the white hot, yeah, or more yellow, I guess. And then, then when you let that like filter back, it's not as intense. Maybe you just kind of like let it filter out a little bit, you know, what do you mean? fall apart. You know, in, in intensity, because I already like this. What it's doing right now with that super white hot coming from the mouth and just coming becoming more yellow and yeah. you know, fading away. I love that. That's an improvement. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you, man. It's sure. Better. Sure. So the embers, what do you think? Embers are good. Um, yeah. No, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with all that. <laughs> yeah, I, I still think that like this came out really good. Like coming bringing just bringing that shadow up. Really, I think, really, I think it's an improvement. Yeah. Yeah, it really, really helps. Right on, dude. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call my what what's called. Oh, I'm I'm. It's always a work in progress. I always I always can pick on pick on it, but um, just so people can see it. And what are you gonna do with this? This nothing. I'm just gonna. It's it was a sketch that like didn't work out for a job, and it was just more of a fun exercise for me. So yeah, it's this little this it's the 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 actual beer label uh, brand is called the Blinded Sailor, and so it's this sailor that's like in in the midst of um, in the midst of uh, Being blind. Be, can't can't see and it, and the reason I did like the haze of the uh, the haze of the um, around him or whatever is because it's a hazy IPA so the, the beer itself is a, is kind of like this hazy beer so that's that was, cool man that I, was the that was the intention anyways it's, it just it seems like something that's worth selling I mean I, that's not a big deal to you it sounds like no I mean it's, it's not it's, a driving force for you right now no not necessarily for the sketches and the rough ideas and stuff and two it's also a sketch for a company so it's not I don't know if I could just say sell it to a, like an individual without because this is all uh, like I don't know if this is they're feeling like this needs to be prior, prior. they would probably say oh no do I want to keep it I want they want to keep everything that I that I put in the oh well that, that's, that's definitely different yeah yeah but at any rate it was a good night it was yeah, good it was a lot of fun a lot of fun you're welcome to hang out more it's yeah past, for sure a little past 11 is it really yeah. yeah are you done recording or did you hit stop no I'm still recording uh, okay I'm gonna sign it real quick yeah alright Thanks for sharing your uh, your art table. And <laughs> this is fun, man. I uh, and I was able to come over here. It was even cool too. I mean, yeah, it worked out great. I hate my signature. I hate mine too. Don't worry about it. This should be more. This should be brighter right here. Where? This, this part of the bone. Yeah. Um, See, it's never done. It's never done. No, I mean you're gonna, you're always gonna find stuff. Um, if this is like the, the chin too. Yeah, the chin too. I would create almost a line, an actual yeah. definite line. I'm trying to figure out where it'd be hitting, but and bring it back into the yeah. There you go. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I get excited. You do. Man. There you go. Oh, that's nice. That little ridge. I'll leave it dark. Yeah. For you sure. Just leave it white. Yeah, definitely. Because wow. yeah. Cause you could even like if you wanted to take that white pen and just hit under oh, underneath yeah, the nose here, and then if you wanted to tone it, you could too. But just around under the underside of the nose, you know where that where the yellow is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, nice little addition there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What about right here on the cheekbone? Where? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you wanted just or like the, a couple yeah. of a couple little dots, like little the little. little yeah, not a not a super solid line. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, you could go all night and just find little things to pick apart. But yeah, exactly. At one point, at some point, you kind of go, "All right, that's cool, man." I feel like I learned some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. No problem. No pleasure.